Okay, we are moving on with forces, and today we're going to talk about uniform circular motion. Now, the thing about uniform circular motion, this is not the rotational stuff that we're talking about. Um, so we are talking about tangential velocity. and centripetal acceleration. We'll hold off our discussion about Newtonian and non-Newtonian reference frames and the difference between centripetal and centrifugal acceleration in a little bit. So, Newton's first law tells me that objects like to go in straight lines at constant speeds. So, if we have to make this, oof, it's an ugly circle. Sorry. If we have to make this object, it's an uglier circle, go in a circle, we're going to have to push on it somehow to make that happen. So if we're going in a straight line and we want it to go in a circle, we'll have to push in towards the center. So the force that causes an object to go in a circle. or the force that causes centripetal motion is towards the center. Imagine spinning something around on a string. You're pulling it in towards the center the whole time. This is why it's a centripetal force. Uh, it's center-seeking force is in towards the center. <clears throat> so. Even if this thing goes around in a circle and the velocity remains constant, the acceleration that we experience is v squared over r. We get an acceleration because the direction of the velocity is changing, and the direction of this acceleration at any point is also in towards the center. It's in the direction of force, and if we look at a change in velocity, velocity 1, velocity 2, the difference between those vectorally points in towards the center as well. This is how we're going to calculate that centripetal acceleration. And again, this is tangential velocity. Um, so, mass of 4 kilograms is spun at a speed of 10 meters a second. And the tension in the string Sorry. And the tension in the string four, five, ten is five newtons. What is the radius? Uh, in this case, we'd say the sum of our forces equals our mass times our centripetal acceleration. And that's going to be equal to the tension in the string. So uh, 4 kilograms times V squared over R is equal to um, the tension, 5 newtons. Uh, the radius is 4 kilograms times 10 squared divided by 5 newtons. That gives me the radius. So 400 divided by 5, uh, the radius comes out to be 80 meters. That's how we use it. What this does is goes in for the net force acting on my object as it goes around in a circle. So we're going to look at two simple cases uh, that we use centripetal acceleration for and, and then something more complicated. You're going to hate that. So, we have a horizontal circle. Car moving around a track. Or something spun in a flat circle. nice thing about this is there is no gravity to deal with. In a horizontal circle, sort of going flatly, um, 
if it's a car around a track, we have whatever force is pointing us inward. We have the weight pulling down and the normal force pulling up. In a lot of cases, this is going to be friction. If it's just tension, then you don't have to deal with the normal force or weight. Um, the thing to notice is that centripetal force is not a separate force. It's a label that we put on all of our forces. So we take the sum of our forces and say that it's equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. We still have the responsibility of finding out what makes that happen. We can't just say, oh, there's a centripetal force that makes it go around. It has to be attributed to something. In this case, it's the force of friction. Horizontal circles are the easiest thing to deal with. Uh, next, we have a vertical circle. And here, we're going to have to deal with gravity. This would be uh, like a roller coaster on a track. And the thing about this is, I know my centripetal acceleration is towards the center every single time. Centripetal acceleration is always at right angles to the velocity, but in this case, we have the weight and possibly the normal force of the track or the tension. Uh, here we have the normal force in this way, and the weight is down. Here the weight is down, and the normal force is up. The force is keeping us in this circle change as we go around the circle. But these are the three places that we're going to need to look out, look at the most. Um, so at the top, some of my forces is mass times centripetal acceleration. That's going to be the weight plus the normal force. At the bottom, things change. Some of my forces is mass times centripetal acceleration and that's going to be the normal force minus the weight. That's going to change how we solve things. It's going to make the normal force bigger. And when we're at the top, one thing to really remember at the minimum speed we're just barely hanging on and the normal force is equal to zero. That's how we would figure out what the minimum speed to complete the circle is. Whether we're talking about normal force or tension or whatever's keeping us in a vertical circle, the only thing that's doing that at minimum speed is going to be the weight. Okay, your centripetal acceleration is going to be equal to gravity. All right, the roll bads. It's a banked curve. This is a little bit more difficult. Um, if you've ever seen NASCAR, when they go around the track, um, it's not a flat track, it's a banked curve. So let's say here's our car and it's going this way, but if it's up on a banked curve, if it's up on a banked curve, then things work a little bit differently here. So on this banked curve we have our mass, let's say in this case the velocity is into the page. So that's how we usually say that things are into the page, it's an x, that's the direction of our velocity. That's the case, the forces we have working on this are the weight as always and uh, it's not coming out right is it and there we go the normal force but because we're going around in this circle we know that the acceleration is in towards the center the direction of my acceleration <clears throat> is this way and it depends on the radius and how fast we're going So if we're going to look at what's going on with our forces, again, we need to remember we want a force to be perpendicular to our acceleration. We're going to leave mg alone 
and and this time make that theta we're gonna to have to break up the normal force and look at what part of the normal force points in this way and then what part of the normal force points up and so we're gonna to have to look at more triangles so I'm just do that right here if if this is 90 degrees okay and we want the part that's out and up that's going to be theta that's going to be 90 minus theta and up here is theta so the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero we're not accelerating this way or at least we don't want to um, and we're going to have mg in one direction minus if we look at our little triangle that's the normal force times the cosine of theta and if we look at the sum of the forces in our y direction that's going to be equal to I'm oh, no, sorry x direction that's where we have our centripetal acceleration and that's going to be equal to the normal force times the sine of theta this is how we would figure out things like our minimum speed to be able to do this without sliding up or down um, the incline so this tells me that mg is equal to the normal force times the cosine of theta and that the normal force is equal to mg over the cosine of theta so if we plug that in over here mass times the velocity squared over the big radius of our turn is equal to the normal force which is mg over cosine theta times the sine of theta easy trig identity masses go away so the mass doesn't matter in this and v squared over r is equal to mg no sorry v squared over r is equal to g times the tangent of theta um, so where we're going to leave it for now we will work on some of these examples in class tomorrow um, but what I want you to be thinking about is well two things one what's going to happen when we add friction what about friction and, and the other thing is why do we experience when we're inside a car the force that points us outside of the circle we haven't really explained that yet We'll talk about those two things in class tomorrow, and then I'll let you work on some of these problems.